speak about Dame, I do hear his name pop up in different battle raps, whether they paying homage to him. Explain to me, because I'm not, I'm not, I'm from Norfolk, so I'm not yes, as familiar with him. Shout but I've heard City. his name uh, multiple times. Yes, sir. Explain to me Dame's legacy and what he did to leave that strong impact on, you know, all his peers and, and family that, that was left behind. Dame was one of the guys that he brought the best out in anybody he met. The most genuine authentic guy I ever met in my life. They ain't had a way of making you believe that you can fly. And that's no lie. You'll ask anybody out here in these streets about Daniel Maurice Riddick and the, and, and the influence that he had on people. He'll make you feel like you can fly. Not a battery in your back, but he made you believe. He was that believable that if he said it, you felt like you can do it. The man took tide water in the seven cities and he threw it on his back. It wasn't no MC out here, and I put everybody on the line. It was nobody in the Tidewater area, and I feel like in the world, that can compete with the arsenal that this man was equipped with. Nobody. Nobody can do it like that. The man knew every song that was on a radio, mixtape, anything, before anybody knew what the song was. Dana walk up to you with a headphone and a Walkman, and what's up? Then Dana just fall back and just start rapping the song. You're like, man, what is he rapping? I mean, we didn't even know the music. We thought it was his music. Then all of a sudden, he'll put the jump maybe in a in a cassette in a, in a, in an actual cassette player. Now you'll hear the music. You'll be like, yo, man, this this man know every word of the song. Like, music was him. That man was a legend out here, and he influenced so many people. What you hear now today is a lot of people that was influenced by Daniel Maurice Riddick. They was influenced by life, man. He put a battery in so many folks back. And their talents are remarkable. He created so many talents out here. Who you will ever hear? Out here, you got the old MFL, you got CMG, you got the network. I'm talking about the era that we came from that really solidified actual Virginia Street music. Now, I ain't taking nothing away from nobody else that was doing their work. I'm just speaking from the era of Daniel Maurice Reddy. The things that he put everybody up to doing is remarkable. That man left a legacy. He was before his time. Dane was like a visionary. He, he seen any and everything and he showed you things that you was capable of doing and you done them. If he said, if he gave you the green light to do it, it's like, I know I can do it now. I know I can do it, man. Dane will walk into anybody, anybody's facility, anybody's place and he'll take over the show. It's not even the fact that he want to be the main man in the middle of the spotlight. It was just because everybody do respect with this man. They had so much respect for his talent and for who he was. Dana give you the jersey off his back, shoes off his feet. Where you think I learned it from? I came from this man. When I say I came from this man, I was like under his wing, I was like a son. That's what I mean. That's my heart. That's my heart. That man taught me so much. I love his mama, I love his brother, I love his whole family, man. It's like, like I said, I don't have no family out here in Virginia. When I came down here, friends became family. Family. They say that on the Sprint commercial. It's family, man. A lot of people, man, they come up behind Daniel Maurice Reddick, man, and he was a major influence out here, man. His legacy will always remain, and he will always be the greatest of all time. I don't care who come through here, nobody can compete with what that man done. Nobody. I um I Nobody. when I was I was listening to one of your mixtapes, man, and I I felt the impact of who he was based on um I think you had a track. He was what was it called on your dang dang grind or what was yeah, what was, was the name of that track? Yeah. yeah, that was featuring Young Life. Yeah, I could I can envision the type of person he had to be based on the feelings that you put behind that behind that uh record. Was that, what was going through your mind when you made that? Because, I mean, it seemed like he put in a lot of groundwork and went harder than any other artist in the city. What was, in, what was involved in that song, to be quite honest with you, I don't make songs out of emotion. I'm very strategic with my music, but this one song, my emotions got the best of me and they, they had to be recorded. Mm. I say things in a lot of my music that in reference to that man, because of the, le the legacy he left behind. The man was a major influence in everything I've done. He made me who I am today. Dane is the one that gave me the nickname of Horse. Okay. It was a joke. 
Like us just going out and having fun, it was, Dane was always the joking type. He always wanted to fry you. That's what he wanted to do. At the end of the day, around the time we used to go party, man, we used to be in a cave and Uchiwali would come on Nas record featuring the Bravehearts. And it was always one line of, it's that horse, I, it must be. I heard he husky. And he'll always look at me and grin. I'm gonna call you horse, cause you fat and light skinned. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so Don't disrespect like... the big horse, man. But it was a joke. And it was a name that stuck with me. Horse was unremovable. It just stuck with me throughout the years. He just kept calling me. I started with C Boogie. Hmm. C Boogie. That, people still call me Boogie to this day. And once he came with the horse and he died, that name stuck with me. And when I made my first come out the gate, I kind of coincided the two names. He used to call me Sea Boogie. Everybody knew me as Sea Boogie, but some people knew me as Horse, so that's why I combined the two and I made Horse Boogie. That was the start of me. Coming out of the gates with music.